Hi, it's Tony Verhoeven with the National Air Filtration Association. We're here in Montreal at the uh, annual convention here, 2019 annual convention, and I'm sitting here with Jason White, who is with the uh, with UBC, University of British Columbia, and you are the, tell me again your title. I'm the People and Process Manager in Building Operations for Mechanical Trades. Fantastic. And last night, you accepted uh, a clean air, or one of our clean air awards that NAFA gives out every year. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Excellent. So so how that works, I guess I under how I understand it is that uh, you know some of our members who are might be your supplier or vendor in, in air filtration products uh, or a distributor will uh, help you out quite a bit and perhaps nominate you. So you've won the award. So tell me a little bit about how that process went and 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 kind of maybe at the beginning of what is your uh, what was your facility like? You know, how are you improving through your air filtration? Sure. Uh, so when I when I took on this role uh, a little over a year ago, um, one of the uh, the biggest challenges that I found was in our air filtration uh, across campus, across the various buildings and operating contexts within those buildings and also saw the greatest opportunity to improve that. So I started getting my head wrapped around what an indoor air quality program would look like. And um, one of the key uh, components of that, uh, one of three key components, uh, one being the process itself and implementing a PM program or strategy. Uh, the second uh, piece to that was the supplier. And the third piece was our supply management or our procurement of the of the filters that we were going to have on campus. So the key for s the supplier was um, reaching out to the various vendors that we we would uh, contact and seeing what they could do for us. And one of the um, instrumental uh, contacts was uh, Filter Pro Services, uh, uh, specifically Brad Beheel, who, who ended up being uh, the nominating person for our uh, our award so i have to you know give a cap tip to him and then thank him very Absolutely. much for this good good job filter row services all right <laughs> so so tell me what were things like before you started working with them and what was the kind of the state of your air filtration in, in well the air? it uh very reactive uh, in in one word reactive so um high level of complaints from the occupants um a number of different uh, service calls, trouble calls coming in for various conditions that the, the clients were experiencing in the, in the s various spaces, whether it was for teaching, research, curatorial, or collections, uh, IT services, anything, again, going, getting back to operating context, mm -hmm. uh, no airflow, um, temperature control, humidification control, a lot of issues. And then when I dug deeper, I found that... Uh, the good old Pareto rule or 80-20 rule, 80% uh, of the uh, the effects being being um, felt in the space was as a result of 20% of the the cause, and, and that 20% was filters. So, what could I do to improve that? Um, so, I thought about uh, first of all establishing a baseline for improving our indoor air quality, and the baseline when I started looking for certifications. Uh, NAFA came up, and that the NCT level one was the what I s thought was the baseline. And then I, when I started doing some research, that's when I reached out to Brad and asked him if, he, as him being a, a CAFS or certified air filtration specialist, he could administer the test to our mechanical assistants. And uh, when I also looked at it, I also thought that not only did the the frontline staff need this certification, but uh, the supervisors, their direct supervisors, and also our management in mechanical, so that every level within that, we could all speak the same language, and we all had the same level of credential, so that we would have that professionalism and, and, and again, establish a baseline for improving our process. Right, so what I hear you saying is, you know, you didn't just have them come in and install a bunch of equipment, right? what you had them or new filters or the best media whatever what i heard you say was you first installed a new culture right a clean air culture right you with 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 training 
uh, of, of, of your all of your folks, of your, your staff and your managers. Exactly. My, my background is um, is uh, as a power engineer and, and uh, you know, more recently uh, reliability um, engineering and, and uh, getting credentialed that way. So understanding uh, asset life cycle and, and how we can extend an asset's operating and maintaining life cycle and lower the total cost of ownership. Um, so when I start putting that hat on and understanding what causes a, a, a failure of an asset when, it com when you apply that to filtration, uh, there's a number of diagnostics that can happen way before it becomes a functional failure of the filters. Um, and the clients in the, in the space um, complain. So we can do tactics, maintenance tactics, to address that. And uh, w when I establish a baseline so that everybody understands uh, what best practices are, which NAFA uh, has uh, very well laid out, uh, both in their, their documentation and on their website, uh, I start to apply that to uh, understanding potential failures of filters. Then I employ the, the preventative maintenance tactics uh, that go along with that so that we address the potential failures way before they become a functional failure and the clients never know the difference. And that's the big thing is with air filtration, um, water flow, anything like that, if we're doing our jobs well, they, don't, they never know we're there. Right. Um, so clean air, uh, they, they just keep on doing whatever they're doing in the space. They never complain that they're stuffy, that they're hot, that they're cold, because they're getting the proper airflow, the circulation, the number of room exchanges that they need to do their job effectively, whatever that is. So what were some of the things that, th th there's probably, maybe there was dozens or, or many things that, that you had mentioned, you know, that were, that were, that needed improvement. You're probably still going through an improvement process. What were some of the, the things that were like low hanging fruit, like that made the biggest difference you know, if there's somebody watching that another facilities manager that, that you could help out? Uh, I would say um, regular inspections, um, making sure that the, 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 the people that are doing the inspections understand what a loaded filter looks like versus an unloaded. The, the uh, impact of if they do come across uh, a loaded filter that isn't letting the, the air flow through, if they remove that filter to let air flow through the impact of the downstream equipment of that. Right. So th they're just moving the problem from the filter to the coil, to the motor, to the VFD, whatever whatever equipment is uh, um, involved with that. So there's there's a number of impacts to the uh, to the downstream equipment, and then of course the maintenance costs go go up considerably. So a better filtration program will lower your maintenance costs. So Jason, what? Tell me a little bit about what uh, Filter Pro Services did to kind of take you to that to that next level. What were some of the things that they helped you out with specifically? Well, it's interesting because um, at the conference here yesterday, uh, uh, I think it was Phil Mavy uh, was referencing the difference uh, with the, the suppliers moving from a, a sort of a, pe a peddler mentality and into a consultant mentality and providing that extra um, service to the customers. And I really saw that with, with Filter Pro, with uh, Brad's approach. Um, he didn't just drop the filters off at our loading dock um, and said, there you go, and uh, see you later. Uh, he was able to come in and, and assess what was going on, help us with uh, and advise us with, uh, with a better approach, and, and also in, was able to administer the, the NCT uh, exam for our number of people on the various levels that I that I already referenced, uh, um, whether it was on the the trade floor or the management, um, he administered that test. So that's for me. That's going above and beyond just a uh, supplier. What a supplier would do. Mm -hmm. That shows a level of care that that helps me move my initiatives forward and uh, and you know establishes a strong relationship b between the vendor and the, the, the customer. Right, right. So, you know, in, in someone who, like yourself, who's, you know, a facilities manager, an operations director, uh, in, in charge of these, these sorts of operations, you know, you, they, many people probably have relationships where, you know, invoice, or PO, 
invoice delivery and and the filters show up and then there's a team there but to to take you to you know an award-winning facility uh requires more yeah. of a partnership right more value absolutely more and, I, and i would i would challenge anybody that uh was, is in facilities management or operational management of of facilities uh depend doesn't matter what the operating context is lean on these um filter suppliers for that institutional knowledge of what they have what the best practices are what's new and the trends that are moving forward and and the various media that you can use and the various tactics that you can uh you can use with regards to filtration because there might be a better way and uh ultimately lower your cost uh for maintaining those buildings. Absolutely. So would you recommend that uh, people in your position, you know, look at NAFA and like maybe look for specific certifications, make sure they're dealing with somebody who has their CAFS or their NCT one or two? Certainly the, uh, the, the, the NCT for us was the, the baseline um, for moving our indoor air quality program forward um, so that we were all speaking the same language. Uh, there's a level of professionalism there's a level of uh, accountability, and there's also the uh, the ownership um, of the filtration program uh, at the at the uh, the frontline staff level. So definitely uh, the NCT, and then uh, I, I'm thinking also the CAFS. Uh, not quite sure of the NCT level two. That's that's a little bit more technically advanced. Uh, that bag in bag out. Um, I think we would still probably leave that as a, as an outside contracted service just because of the uh, you know the the level of expertise that's required for that um, so but definitely NCT level one and CAFS excellent excellent so just wanted to put a nice bow on this here Jason just to kind of really understand what the clean air award means and really why why you want it here so here's right from the NAFA website the award program has been instituted by NAFA in order to promote and recognize the use of high efficiency filtration products and good maintenance practices. It will be presented and was presented last night for an outstanding effort in maintaining a clean and healthy indoor work environment while reducing overall operating costs. I, it sounds like that's what we just talked about. It sounds like that's is, you know, maybe you ne you're probably never done in your in your position, but it sounds like you're well on your way to that. Yeah, we're moving in the right direction for sure. And and one one added thing that I should note from from my perspective is uh, uh, taking this award back uh, is it shows uh, the guys and and um, both on the trades floor our, our senior management and also the, the the administrators of the faculties that we we provide service for that we are moving in the right direction and it's an employee engagement thing. It's a professional development thing. It's it, it's a tangible thing that somebody does care about air filtration and uh, and we should too absolutely for something we can't see we breathe we need you know i think most of us probably take it for granted right and and probably in your position you want people to take it for granted you want you, you want it you guys want to just do your thing and make sure people can uh breathe easy exactly <laughs> i don't want anybody to know uh that we've been replacing filters there should be a seamless approach within the spaces that we're servicing right you don't want to be thinking about that you are breathing air because if you are there's probably a problem yeah it's <laughs> it's when they notice that then th then there's a problem and and that we haven't done our jobs fantastic well jason white i really appreciate your time thank and you very uh, much congratulations okay bye